So check, I have located my stationary points. There's the first one right there, and then there's the second one. But I don't know what kind they are. It could be, it could be any of these, right? How do I do this? Okay. Now, as you're going to discover, there's more than one way to actually solve this next question of determining the nature. But what I want to do is just use the tools we have at our disposal. Now, just look more carefully at these guys, right? Do you remember I said to you before, oh, how, how can we describe what's happening? Well, for this guy, it's decreasing, then it stops, and then it's increasing. Yeah? That's how you can tell. That's what it looks like. Um, this is the opposite, right? It's increasing then it's decreasing. Like that's how you would tell the difference between these. What can you tell me about this one? What's the derivative going to be doing before and after that stationary point? Positive, then zero, then positive again. And then here, it's the opposite. It's negative and then negative. So based on this, and maybe you want to jot this uh, on the side in different color, right? Uh, I'm going to use this space down here, OK? If I go positive, then it's zero, then it's negative. Which one of those is it? Have a look. Positive, then it's zero, then it's negative. Which, which one is it? It's the upside down. It's the upside down parabola, right? Now, what that means is the stationary point we found, it's at the top of the function. It's at the top. So we call this, we call this configuration a maximum. It's like that's the highest you can go in this little vicinity. Okay? So this is a maximum. What if I switch the order? What if it was negative, then zero, then positive? Which one of those is it? <laughs> it's, it's the regular looking parabola. It's this guy, right? Decreasing, zero, increasing. This is not a maximum. It's a minimum, right? So I'm looking at what's the derivative doing just to the left and just to the right, OK? Now, because I know what kind of function this is, I'm just going to pause there. We'll visit those other guys on the left-hand side. They're, honestly, you know enough to actually be able to complete this situation for those particular ones on the left-hand side. But I'm just going to hit pause on them for now. I'm going to tell you right now, just to make things a bit simpler for this example, these guys are either going to be a maximum or a minimum. And I just need to find out which one it is. I need to sort of look around the stationary point and see what's going on. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to test values of the derivative. OK? The easiest way to lay this out in a um, systematic way is to draw up a table of values for dy and dx. We're going to draw up a table of values for dy and dx. We need particular values of x and then the values of the derivative for those x values. OK? And I just need to know what's happening on the left. And what's happening on the right? So for this guy here, what's a value a little bit to the left of negative 2? Negative 3. three. How about negative 3? That's a bit to the left, right? We know what's happening at negative 2. What's a little bit to the right of negative 2? How, how about negative 1, right? This is just to the left, just to the right. Now, I'm actually going to put an asterisk on these. We're going to come back to these values later because you'll see you actually have to be quite careful with your selection of these. But for now, to keep the example simple, let's have a go at just this because it will do the job for us. Okay? We've already done some of this. We know the derivative is 0 at negative 2. But now what I'd like you to do is go to the derivative, this guy here. Mm, here it is, x squared minus 4. Can you pop in these two values for me, please? And then tell me what values you get. Is it 5? Because it's, uh, it's 9 minus 4. So that's 5. What about this one? 3 minus 3. Negative 3? So which one is it? Well, it's the maximum, right? Positive, 0, then negative. And you can even visualize this for you, right? What does the gradient look like? It's increasing, then it's stationary, it's flat, and then it's... Decrease. You can even see the maximum shape right there. Okay. Say that again. Sorry. Uh, yeah, because I've I've separated them out. Right. So therefore, I would say, see this guy here, right? I can say, based on this table of values, therefore, negative two comma sixteen over three is a. Oh, I've zoomed in too far. It's a maximum turning point. That's what I call it. That is the nature of the stationary point. This is a maximum oops 
Turning point. Can I ask you please to repeat this process, draw yourself up another tiny little table, but do it for the other turning point. Okay, do it for this guy. You want to find a value just to the left, a value just to the right. You can determine them yourself. And then draw up your table of values accordingly. Go ahead and do that for me, please. Because what you've got is x squared minus 4 is your derivative, right? When you try it out your values, correct me if I'm wrong, I think you just get them in reverse order. Yeah? Did you get that already? Okay. So in the same way, you can be like, oh, it's decreasing, then it's horizontal, then it's increasing. This is a minimum turning point. So I would say, therefore, 2, 16, Yes? Can you explain why was a maximum Say it again, sorry? Can you explain Because is it coming up like that? Are you talking about that one over there? Yeah. Okay, so it's a maximum because, yeah, you, you go up, then you stop, and then you come back down, which is, but it's like, imagine a roller coaster, right? As you hit the top, and then you start going down. So that means it's a maximum, you're right at the very top of it, at least in that little area, okay? Um, and we said, to conclude, this is a minimum, oh, because, it goes down. because it, it's the bottom. It's the bottom of a valley, if you like, okay? It's a minimum turning point. Okay. Now, we're going to stop there, okay? But I will quickly show you what it looks like, and you might want to do this yourself. Um, what was the function I gave you? I think it was x cubed x divided by 3? Minus 4. That's x. right. I need the whole thing. Ah. Minus 4x. Divided. There we go. Minus 4x, right? Yeah. There we go. Wow. Okay, can you guys see that okay? All right, now. Um, remember I told you that I, I put an asterisk on these, right? And I said, hey, be careful, okay? And actually, Moe kind of picked up on this, right? Negative three, where is that? That's um, it's over here, right? Negative three is to the left of this maximum turning point, and then negative one is to the right, okay? But I hope you can imagine that I could have given you a different function to begin with, and these turning points could actually have been really close together, like they're closer than negative 2 and 2, that's actually quite spread out, right? Imagine if the two turning points were right next to each other, right, right next to each other. Then when you pick your values, if you went too far, right, then you would not see this kind of behavior. You're like, oh no, I've got positive or negative, I'm not getting what I'm expecting. You actually have to be quite close. I would recommend, and this is tricky because it's a bit of a blurry sort of thing, I would recommend trying to get to this as close as you can without making it awkward for yourself. So for example, uh, negative Oops, no, sorry. Negative 2.1 and negative 1.9, they would be even closer. Do you agree? Right? Um, so I can have greater certainty that I'm going to get, you know, in the neighborhood of this value. But even then, like I could artificially manufacture some weird function where everything was super, super compressed. And even these would not be enough. So it kind of depends on your function. Um, I knew that these would be okay because um, I knew where the stationary points were. Right?